Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about decentralized insurance and where we are with that and what, how, how the next steps could look like. Quick one about who I am and who I'm working with. So I'm Elias. I'm co-founder of B9 Lab. We do development, training, and research around decentralized applications and blockchain. Mostly Ethereum at the moment, because it works the best. Uh, but yeah, other things as well. I want to talk to, uh, to you about insurance. And insurance is, often has this connotation of being relatively dull and being old and being boring. But actually, it is a slow-moving sector, but it's actually, it could be quite exciting in the future. And it is quite exciting in the sense that it underlies almost everything. Uh, almost everything we interact with on a daily basis, at least around these parts, is insured or is, is interacting with some kind of insurance schemes. It ties into different marketplaces. So it really is quite, uh, quite fundamental. And the, the options or you know, the opportunities with decentralized, decentralized systems could be, quite, you know, could be quite disruptive for the sector. Now, the insurance industry has not been disrupted in a long time. It hasn't really changed in a long time. A few things have changed over time, but it still looks very similar to the way it looked 200 years ago. New technologies have obviously changed things, um, but the basic model is still the same. Now, the blockchain and, and decentralized technologies could present an uh, opportunity here to make it more accessible to also to those who are underinsured or don't have access to the insurance schemes they need. Uh, it could make insurance more local and revive old models like mutuals, and I'll get back to that. And it could make insurance more vari varied and more custom. The interesting thing here is we've got a, we've got an intermediary or, you know, large intermediaries, and obviously the technology is a, an essentially disintermediating force. Um, and there are three core elements here that make it interesting and that creates a situation where we could potentially build very interesting, uh, interesting things with this. So we've got low transaction costs when we are operating on a public or uh, consortium blockchain. We've got low transaction risk, so the risk that my transaction is being reversed or being interfered with by any other party is very low. And we've got trustless computation, so we can implement relatively complex financial models um, at, you know, in form of smart contracts on a blockchain system. And this is interesting in a few spaces, and I want to define the problem space a little bit and where this could be applied. So we've got claim processing, which is, you know, we, I buy a policy and the policy sets out certain rules under which I get my coverage. Um, and claim processing is one of the hardest things to crack in this, uh, in, you know, un under this model. So in, in, in many cases, I have to send paper documents or I have to, you know, go somewhere, I have to send data that is not easily, uh, not necessarily there in digital format, or it is down to um, interpretation. So, so a claim processor has to sit down and has to apply certain rules and has to decide. And so this is for, for tr most insurances. And we've also got index-based insurances, things like crop insurance, for example, based on weather in uh, indices. and they rely on data. So we have the problem of being able to, or needing to be able to bring data onto the blockchain to make decisions there. So it splits into two main kind of problem spaces. One of them is rule-based claim processing. So this is bringing data onto the blockchain and then making decisions based on this data, which also brings in, you know, how do you bring data onto the uh, how do you bring data in, and how do you make sure that it's the right data and not being fiddled with? The second 
general problem space is other types of insurances that need that need some kind of voting or that usually have, an, have a person deciding on whether a claim is being paid out or not. So this goes into building incentive models that, that enable groups to decide which claims should be paid out and which claims shouldn't be paid out. So this is for traditional insurance models where, where one participant or multiple participants take out an insurance and there is a detached pool of investment taking over or taking care of the coverage. The other model of insurance that is really, really interesting in, for this space is mutuals. Mutuals have been around for a long time. They started out as fire insurance. It's a model where a group of people gets together and insures each other. This could be by regularly paying into a pot and paying out when one of the participants has a, has a claim or has a claim case. This has already been done with, uh, with car insurance, kind of a social car insurance with a group of people. And again, the interesting part here is bringing in low transaction costs and low transaction risk, so you can connect people very efficiently. The second is that it is inherently peer-to-peer. -peer. Mutual insurances are inherently peer-to-peer. -peer. So, you know, the, the blockchain technology is perfect, you know, is, is a perfect candidate to solve that problem. And the, the infrastructure in itself, obviously, when we build something like this, is, is trustless. And on top of that, we can then build kind of custom trust models. So, for example, we don't have to trust the infrastructure, but we can build a system where um, we define which level of trust we want to have to other people. And lastly, the mutual model is a very, it's very much a proven model. It's been around for a long time, and to this day is executed very successfully. Now, where this is generally, the direction this is generally moving in, and where we think this will, you know, where, where this will culminate is kind of a marketplace creation. So through the lowering of the risk and the cost, you're enabling the breakup of existing monolithic structures. So at the moment, all of these things, underwriting, liquidity, modeling, management, processing, is all in one place, which is within one large insurance company. And this is really because it's, it's very, very difficult to get access to the, the liquidity that is, that is necessary. It's a large numbers game. So you need to spread your risk. And it is uh, very difficult to connect different players, different parties in the market in a way that is efficient enough to execute this. So a decentralized model could be really interesting uh, in, in the way that, that is outlined, uh, outlined on the right side there. We could have, through, you know, through trustless computation, through smart contracts, we can bind different participants in the market to certain rules, and we can, you know, we could see the creation of an insurance market where you, you can create a policy yourself, you get access to risk analysts, risk modeling, you get access to liquidity pools, and all of that is tied together automatically. Now, there are a few things that we've been looking into, so theoretical research uh, and a bit of experimentation, because a lot of this is just really down to trying out how these, model work, how these models work and uh, the game theoretical elements. There are a few areas where it's really worth looking into, and the first three are mainly around weather. Uh, so we've got crop insurance, bad weather insurance, energy markets with weather, and things like a double spend microinsurance. Now I want to qu quickly go into the proof of concept that we've built so far. Which, is, which we'll publish, it's still in testing, we'll publish next week, which is a, a mutual, it's a simulation of a mutual contract, it's a betting game. You have a limited registration period and you pay an initial premium. You join, the, uh, you join this, this mutual and then you have to pay in every interval. So for example, you have to pay five ether every week and once you stop paying, you get your payout. So you know, it's the equivalent of dying in a life insurance model. 
the incentive is that if you drop out first, you get back less than you've invested. The longer you stay in and the more other people drop out, the more return you'll get. And the last person will receive about three times their original investment. Now, this is to simulate interest, uh, interest accumulation. Um, the, first, the first learnings we've had from this is machines have a huge advantage at the, with this. So if you have a script that executes the transactions regularly, that is much more efficient than, than a human, which might seem obvious, but you know, we are recording all of these. And also, if you run out of money, you are basically dead. And so liquidity always wins at this game. The next step is we're going to publish this. And I want to give you a demo, but I don't think I'll have enough time. I'll see. We'll publish this, and you'll be able to, to, to join and try it out. It is initially a betting game, but we're trying to solve insurance research questions with this. Uh, we, we will monitor the behavior. So this is interesting to see when do people engage and when do they drop out. We are starting to engage with insurance companies, and we've been speaking to a few uh, insurance companies to improve models and to see where this could lead. And ultimately, we will iterate on this. So this is the first research question. We will, you know, we will finish the paper around it, and we will move on to different research questions. Now, if you are interested in joining when we publish, uh, when we publish the contract and we publish the proof of concept, go there, leave your email address. We'll add you to a Slack channel. And if you're interested in the topic in general, go there, join us, and we'll keep you informed and as involved as you would like to be. Now I had to update my, I had to restart my computer so the test environment is not running. If you bear with me for a second. Mm. Right. I, I don't, I, I will not have enough time to, to run the demo, unfortunately. But if you're interested in seeing the demo, uh, come speak to me afterwards. Follow us, on, follow us on Twitter. And email us if you're interested in any of this. And yeah, find me, find me afterwards. And I'll show you the, the demo. And I'll show you how you, can, how you can interact with it. Thank you very much. And if there are any questions. Um, there's one thing in, in insurance that I'm not sure that um, at, at least uh, native cryptocurrencies are, are good for. It's um, so, so comp insurance companies. They basically th they don't have the money to uh, to cover all claims. So they yes. rely on the fact, a bit like banks, they rely on the fact that no all claims will be, um, yeah, I mean will be processed at the same time. Um, so isn't that Weakness, if you would have insurances uh, in, in crypto, in native crypto. This is this is actually uh, this is a very complicated problem. So, in if you've got a marketplace and you have to you have to provide full coverage for all policies taken out, it becomes very very inefficient. Now, theoretically, right now you're taking a bet that your insurance will be able to pay you, and if Theoretically, if a decentralized autonomous organization becomes big enough and has enough liquidity and has spread the risk far enough, it's a, it, it could approximate to a similar bet. So you could go, you know, I'm, I'm betting that this is, that it's going to be all right and they're going to be able to pay me. It is a very complex problem and, and I think, you know, it's, it's going to take some time to come up with the, with the solution. And also, this technology doesn't solve all problems uh, at all. It, it's, it's very well fit for a certain t subset, and it might, that might expand. But for the moment, this is one of the problems that, that doesn't really work. Also, funds are tied up, so you can't go and invest them and get a return. So at the moment, it's really interesting for, for mutuals, for mutual schemes. Any other questions? Great. Thank you. Well, thank you very much.